Thank you for joining us for Let the Prophet Speak. This week's episode will include excerpts from Dr. Rose's trip to Germany, where she ministered at Shama International Worship and Training Center with Pastors Samuel and Patricia Boswell, and Agape Faith Christian Center with Bishop and First Lady Neil. This is Dr. Rozier's ninth trip to Germany. She was first invited to prove that prophecy was real and that God still uses prophets today. Since that time, she has been invited back regularly. Enjoy today's broadcast, and we will see you at the end. And that's a strong anointing that hovered from the very beginning and it just kept going in the room. And I began to hear the Lord said, I'm restoring the hearts. I'm restoring the hearts. I'm restoring the hearts back to each other because you've been coexisting. Yes. And to everybody else, you had the paperwork, you had the term marriage, but you realized we, you were as divorced as you could possibly be and still be in a marriage. But a miracle happened tonight. that the enemy tried to take the wind out of them. I felt the breath of life trying to leave them because they poured out so many years and so many different individuals that you're running on fumes. I felt a spiritual resurrection happen tonight. That the Lord was refueling, putting life back in them. It felt as if life was at home this side of the room. It felt as if life was coming out of their bones. I began to feel bones dry up. And it seems like the blood wasn't flowing like it was supposed to. But I felt the wind of the Lord's Spirit and I could literally see like a mist on that side of the room. And he began to water, a water garden. And you're going to feel vibrant when you wake up in the morning. You're going to feel as if 
when you go off to sleep tonight where there were times you felt as if your spirit was leaving your body, you were so exhausted. You would go to sleep and you would feel as if you, your spirit was leaving your body. You would fight to get your spirit back within your body. But you're going to feel the cohesiveness. You're going to feel all three joined together as you were made spirit, soul, and body. The three will come together as one again. And you'll feel at one with the calling and at one with your gender and at one with that anointing. And instead of feeling like I waited too long to retire, you'll feel refined. saying that the presence of God did not encase me. I felt like I stepped out of the natural world into the spirit world and I would have to call myself back into the natural. Immediately, it would open up every gifting because praise is a catalyst for that as well. Praise coming from an anointed vessel. Praise coming from a pure heart, not performance. And I use that because there are a lot of people sing, but they're performers. They're actors. But then there are people that truly love the Lord and they sing out of their being. Even as you were singing that song at the end of the service, let the church say amen. Immediately I went back to watching um, Andre Crouch as he talked about losing two fathers in the same year as Godfather, I believe it was, and his natural father. And the pastor or the preacher stood up and said, lift your hands. And he said, I can't lift my hands. And he asked someone, lift my arms for me. And when they lifted his arms, the Lord began to sing prophetic to, prophetically to him. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. And the home going of a saint is always that way. God has spoken. They can't go except God calls them. And they can't stay if he calls for them. And we have to agree with them. Amen just means I agree. Amen. Two days later, I met this couple. And then we had 30 people, maybe 25, 30 people, women and children in our church. And this woman of God, we met in Luxembourg at a family conference, kind of like this. And um, the woman of God called my wife and I out. It was about five or 600 people, I, as I remember, at the conference. Mm -hmm. And we were in the back. And she called my wife and I up. They'd never met her, never seen her before in my life. And she... Uh, told me just to kind of lift my hands and I lift my hands and she began to prophesy to me. She says, I see you as an eagle. I'll, I'll never forget these words as long as I live. You said, I see you as an eagle and under your wings are eaglets and these will be the pastors. And here's what you said. Here's what you said. These will be the pastors that will come to you, but you will not recruit one. Then I had zero. Now I got 6,251 churches around the world, four continents and nine countries. Wow. In fact, we take off on Sunday to India. As you go to my church, I'm going to be gone. Your prophetic word was absolutely on point. Amen. I mean, we only had one elder in the church, let alone, but I didn't. I mean, but when you said eagle, I'm thinking about it. I'm getting ready to get promoted. <laughs> Like, but I just turned down an assignment. <laughs> but I, I thank God for this woman of God, and we've stayed in touch all of these years. Are you aware that deliverance flows with your prophetic? The reason you went through such horrendous things because God wanted to put the super on your natural so you would have supernatural ability to deliver others because only he was able to deliver you? Yes, yes, I can definitely empathize with what others uh, go through because I, I've gone through so much. And uh, many people have said that to me, that there was a reason why God was allowing all the things to come at my life that were coming at my life. Mm. And just when I thought mm. that I got past the point, I said, sure, God, we're home sailing me out. You know, it's over and then something else will come up. And, uh, but I, it does allow me to not to look at people and not judge them because mm. I can look past and say, but you don't know where they came from. You don't know what they've been through. And when people look at me and say, she's Because you have been so judged. Oh, yes, I've been, I've been judged because because of my experience. It sometimes it shut me on my personality. And people can think I'm stuck up and they can think this and that. I'm in the limelight. My pastor's wife, my first lady. So everyone's looking at me, but they don't know my history. They don't know my past. So it's caused great pain. And I want to share with him and talk with him. He said, baby, they just don't understand. They just don't know they get to know you. It's such a great covering for you. Do you know that? Yes. I, I need him. I need him. And I know I need him for what God has called both of us.
bless God to do what he's called me to do. And God has reaffirmed over and over again that anointing that's upon my life. You know, I think, okay, I'll be 63 this year. Surely, what's left to do? Mm. But uh, God said he, he did not allow me to go forward. So now I want Well, I, you know what? I heard the answer to your question, what's left to do? There's going to be more bearing of your soul. There's going to be more visibility. There are going to be more times that you feel like I'm the only one nude in the room, Lord. Everybody's able to cover up. And you're required that I show my private parts to talk about things you never, mm. never plan to talk about. Mm. That's what's next. He's going for, you've offered him all of this, and he's saying, no, I want what you have locked in that vault. That you don't plan to share with the living soul. Some things you've never told him. He's going after that this year. And the next book will be nothing like the first, because the next book will be a tell -all. And it will sell itself. Because people will see your struggles. They will see all the obstacles, all the pain. The pain that you thought is nobody's business. You have a propensity to be this very, very private person. And I'm not sharing all my business. But the Lord is going to share all your business. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I'm sorry. Or congratulations. I'm not alone. <laughs> Would you say that again? I said, don't you want to interview somebody else? We're going to ride along, right? <laughs> the best is yet to come. You haven't had ministry. You haven't felt the anointing like you're going to feel it. Mm. You haven't felt the liberty and the freedom like you're going to. Mm. He's going to turn you inside out of what you regretted him asking for. You're going to thank him for asking. Because it's going to be an antidote that's going to life the hard cases that other people thought they would never get over, never be able to talk about. It will kill the shame in them. Hallelujah. It will bring joy and they will use it as a badge of courage instead of feeling shame and humiliated. It is going to save lives. People are on the brink of suicide because you dare to tell the butt naked truth. You'll have true daughters. You won't have fakes. It won't be people that you feel they, they tolerate you but they're here for him. You'll be the real mother because women don't nurse with all the clothes on. They have to bear their breasts and endure the pain of a child latching on and endure the labor pains. I've never met a woman that delivered fully clothed. And what the Lord is going to have you deliver will cause other people to look at areas of your life that you would have never shown. But the pain in here is no value to you. But sharing the pain will be priceless to many. The days of scripture, great men of God would beckon their sons to their knee. Bless them and give them names personifying what they wanted them to be. They gave them guidance and demonstration, showed them how to be rulers and kings over nations. Whatever happened to the fathers of those generations? Now we see boys planting seeds of life in grounds untilled, unprepared. The crops they yield are as the sower, unkept, wandering hopelessly as if no one ever cared. They no longer rule nations. We are a chosen but frozen generation. The dominion we dominate reeks with evil and hate. Colors, corners, crack houses, consequences, leaving fathers standing in courthouses waiting to be released on their own recognizance. What is this? Whatever happened to the days when daddies would play house with their little girls and plaited braids and curls have tea time and read rhymes and never ever ever let it cross his mind to touch her breast or feel what was under her dress. All daddy wanted to do was take his little girl in his arms and pray for God's sweet caress upon his baby girl. Daddy's meant fun times and beatings ice cream trips, playing cards and cheating, calling strange aromas animal names but he was daddy and it was just a game now we hear boys and girls cry why I, I 
I've been looking for you, Daddy. I need you to be at home to sit at the head of the table so Mama's eyes won't roam from the clock to the door. Mm. Uh, I don't want to see her cry anymore. I miss your smile, your deep voice, the smell of your cologne. Come back home. I need you, Daddy. But just in case, just in case I can't see you anymore, leave me with an inheritance. Don't leave me like Esau. Give me the God of your fathers because the gifts you give are good, but they're not always what they should be. Yet the Heavenly Father gives good and perfect this. So I look to this for you to be Abba Father, the everlasting Father. He was Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob's father. He is Ishmael's father. And if you're orphaned, he'll be your mother and your father. So I say to you today, as you gaze upon God, no matter what the case, he is a father that the righteous can run into and be kept safe. Scripture. We also prophesied to our children and to our children's friends. Wir haben auch zu unseren Kindern und deren Freunden prophezeit. So that their our children and their friends, damit unsere Kinder und ihre Freunde knew that Jesus was real. Wussten, dass Jesus real ist. And that he could tell them what they were thinking. Und dass ihr er ihnen sagen konnte, was sie denken. What they were praying about. Worüber sie beteten. That he answers prayer. Und dass er Gebete beantwortet. You have to talk to your kids about money. Du musst zu deinen Kindern bezüglich Geld sprechen. About how to make money work for you. Wie man Geld dazu bringt, dass es für einen arbeitet. Not work for money. Und dass man nicht für Geld arbeitet. But let money work for you. Aber, zu, aber schauen, dass das Geld für einen selbst oder das Geld selbst arbeitet. Man so then we had to get it together. Also mussten wir es erst auf die Reihe kriegen. We had to teach them about a savings account. Wir mussten denen beibringen, wie man ein Sparkonto hat. Investments. Wie man investiert. You love others through horrendous situations. You wear one face and you give people the impression that you're as tough as steel or strong as steel, but you're as fragile as China. You, you, I feel this glass that, that just keeps cracking and breaking because they don't really see the real you. You've had to be strong to not be killed by life, but you've had to be strong when you wanted to be fragile, when you wanted just someone to hold you and just to see you and to love you and you've never been loved at the level that you've loved others you've given and given and you've had so many withdrawals withdrawals from your life I felt like a withdrawal like someone went in the bank vault and they cleaned out the vault and within the last two years you feel like this empty vault like what else am I going to give I give people everything and I misjudge they write me off they read me the room Way, and you open up and talk so that they will know you and the more you try to explain you the worse it gets but the best is yet to come God has not forgotten your work and labor of love and I'm quoting scripture but it's relevant it's applicable to your life he's not forgetful he's keeping a book of remembrance what other people have forgotten and you've had to struggle to get where you are you've had to fight to get where you are. I keep seeing this. What's her name? Jennifer, that one American Idol, Jennifer Hudson. Yes, I kept seeing that analogy, Jennifer Hudson. I stand behind you. You've gone through people that you love the most were the ones that you lost, the ones that walked out of your life. There were others you wish would leave, but the ones that you needed the most. And it's like you went to the Lord and said, God, you could have taken anybody else. But every time I draw close, that's the one you put your hand in. That's who you take. Okay, I get it now, Lord. If you prophets are born out of rejection, I'm there. Out of abandonment, I'm there. If you just want me to climb up in your lap, well, there's no other lap left. But you was for me to climb up in. But the Lord is going to bring a man alongside that is your statue. That's your equal. You've been fishing out of a pond when the ocean is yours. He said, you've been using a little fishing pole when he wanted to put a reel in your hand. And some of them you were willing to throw back so they didn't jump off the hook. But it was the Lord coaching them to get off the hook. Because he didn't want you to have to come to sin and dumb down to make him feel good. You're very intelligent. You're very smart. 
you're very, very creative. But the loneliest time for you is the wee hours of the morning. Oh my God, I almost feel like grabbing you and hugging you. I feel almost faint. That the coldness that I feel is like the being at the North Pole with the polar bears. It's like you're about to freeze to death. There's such a loneliness that it feels like lightning running through my soul. Of God, how, how can I bear this? Of times of being in a fetal position and rocking yourself to sleep. But there's an angel of the Lord's presence mm, oh that God. didn't just come there. He's been there. Watching over you. Mm. Singing to your spirit. And doing emotional surgery. He's going to take out the cancerous areas that brought damage to your heart. Emotionally. And it's a new season. Coming your way. Woo! Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you. What does that mean to you? Accurate, uh, current, relevant. I'm rejoicing because um, I do. I love to the extreme. I give my soul and I've said, God, I've poured into so many people on but it took pieces of you. It took parts of you. Did you almost lose you? But he's putting you back together again. Okay, I love you. In Second Chronicles 2 and 20, it says, Believe in the Lord, your God, and you will be established. Believe in the prophet and you will succeed. And we have succeeded because of the words that you have given us directions. And we love you and we appreciate you. And this is for you. It will be mailed to your home. And that says that. I think it's very, very important. There are a lot of individuals uh, that have moved throughout the body of Christ and they have um, impersonated prophets. They have impersonated giftings. They've given people the wrong idea about prophecy. And the very first time I was invited to Germany, uh, Chaplain Dudley at the time at Spangdalem Air Force Base invited me to the chapel because one of the young ladies that was on our prophetic team in our church said to him, prophecy's real. Valerie Thomas, and he said, I've never seen real prophecy, and I don't believe in prophets. I've seen mess, I've seen confusion, but I really don't believe that it's real. And he invited me to Germany, his words, come and teach and preach on the prophetic and demonstrate, prove that it's real. And of course, I was open to the challenge because I know in whom I belong, and I understand the power of the Holy Spirit and the gift that he has given me. And it was the door, it opened the door for me to come into Europe because coming the very, I think the second group of people I prophesied to was Colonel Neal and First Lady Neal and calling them out and prophesying the word of the Lord convinced Chaplain Dudley that the prophetic is real. Convinced him of discerning of spirits, of healing, emotional healing, physical healing. It was a demonstration model of what God still does today and is supposed to be a part of the church so that they won't seek out mediums, witches, psychics, tarot cards, horoscope, gifts come from God. All good and perfect gifts come from God. Amen. I've placed value on everything that the Lord has said to me. I have notebooks upon notebooks that I have dated back to when I was carrying each one of my children and all of my children are adults. When I was a freshman in college, when I first gave my life to the Lord, Every one of my prophetic words went during those times. We had cassette tapes and VHS. But I recorded everyone, wrote it out. The Bible was written. That's why we're able to read it. I wrote everyone out. So if the tape broke, I still have it. Every time my children reached a place in their life that prophecy was fulfilled, I would show them this is what the Lord said, and you're doing this as a result of what the Lord said. I will look back and say, this is what the Lord said, and I'm at this point. And each time I would go back and date it, when one part is fulfilled, I would date that part and look back and wait for the next half to be fulfilled because it's just that important. I would pray over it and do warfare with the prophecies that have gone before me and war in intercession until the prophecies came to pass. So they won't just happen. Prophecy is conditional. 
you have to fight the devil, fight your mindsets, fight your hang-ups, fight inhibitions. You have to fight everything that, that opposes the word of the Lord over your life. God said it, and I'll give him no rest until he brings it to pass. So it takes the limitations off of the Lord, and at the same token, it prevents us from sitting back and being complacent and being passive and just assuming God must not want this for me because life is hard. I'm a living testimony. I'm a standing miracle today. I was diagnosed with, can diagnosed with cancer about two, three years ago. And I declared the word of the Lord over my life that God said, I shall not die, but live to declare the goodness of God in the land of the living. And, and God gave me a miracle. At this age, but I see 16 and then I see 18 and then I see him standing on a college campus and I see this campus ministry and not just campus ministry. He's on a full scholarship. And he, it's a free ride and he's paying for it. I see this engineering. I see this smart mind. That, that You've already started trying to groom her for college and groom her to super. She's going to go beyond that. I see a PhD behind her name. You're talking a smart individual. She is really, really smart. And she doesn't like to be bored. So you have to watch his counsel. You have to work hard for her not to be bored. Loves reading, loves writing, loves math. She's just a smart individual. So you'll always be proud. And getting uh, awards will almost mean nothing to her. We're kind of like, huh? Oh, okay. Of course I'm going to get it again. She'll score high in a lot of different areas. What you have to do is always make sure she's in an environment where she's to, to sing as she reaches for the mic, the ability to sing from a young girl, two, three, four, she'll be very melodious. She'll sing, yes, yeah, she'll have perfect pitch. She'll be able to harmonize with other individuals. And I hear the, it's a tuning fork, like next to my ear, that just have her in tune with certain things. She won't have the tolerance for people to be off key. That's kind of odd. <laughs> but that's probably somewhere ingrained in you. Okay, well, that explains it. The root and the fruit. I saw as you were carrying him that the eyes of the Lord was looking and looking all the way to the fourth generation. He's going to be the marker that his generation will be a generation that's going to change the U.S. The political arena. He's going to, he will be very political. Please write this down. That by the time he reaches high school, he's going to understand this. He'll already be, he'll be genetically prone to be drawn to that. That I can see him in Washington already as this grown man, this powerful attorney. There's certain laws that are going to change because of him. Thank you for watching. We know that you enjoyed today's broadcast and we hope that you will join us again next week for Let the Prophet Speak.